and welcome everyone to episode 50 of the Drunken Boxing Podcast, coming to you from yet still a hot, humid and sticky steam room called Beijing. The podcast is now half a hundred episodes old and I'm quite proud of this achievement and I want to thank everyone who has followed, supported and listened up until now. All right, let's get into a little bit of Mushin martial culture news. On the channel, there hasn't been a hell of a lot that's been released, um, predominantly because I have been preoccupied with yet still the book release and all of its uh, uh, work that is required uh, in support of that, uh, but also because I did release one video, which is part two of the interview with Li Ziming's daughter, Li Xuren. Um, these uh, types of uh, videos actually take quite a long time to produce uh, because it's a lot of editing, a lot of putting together, but most importantly, it's the translation that takes a long time. I don't think people actually realize how long accurate translation takes, both from a thinking of the best way to put, the forward, uh, put forward the ideas in English, all the supplementary information that has to be put in when something is raised in the video, uh, also the timing, etc. I would say on average, one minute of video footage takes about an hour to create, uh, both subtitling, uh, etc., etc. So these, uh, these types of videos actually take it out of me. I mean, you see an episode, it's about 16, 15, 20 minutes odd, but it's probably around two weeks of work at least, doing something every day, uh, little bits of it every day. So it takes a bit of time. But I'm happy to say that uh, the last episode has been quite well received. It's not the final episode in the interview. There's probably another one or two. Uh, her, her interview includes both her discussing aspects, but also giving us a tour of her Bagua Zhang Museum, which is great. This gives the viewers around the world that don't have the ability to come to Beijing and visit it in person to see it. I mean, it's a virtual tour. She literally takes us through the whole thing and explains things, but also to get insight into information regarding what's presented at the museum, which is something I think that is quite beneficial to Bagua Zhang practitioners all over the world. So if you haven't watched it yet, go out and take a look. I also released a highlight video on uh, some aspects that are or part of the curriculum that is being released in the Hua Jin online online learning program within the Bagua Zhang curriculum and this particular video focused on some of the China within the Liang Sta Bagua Zhang uh, curriculum that has been presented in depth on the online program. And um, I took excerpts from the lesson videos of which there are numerous hours on this one specific uh, aspect that was presented in the video and uh, coupled it with old footage from around 30 odd years ago when a group of Americans and some others first came to China and were studying with uh, Liang family practitioners and learning an exact set that I present in the online program. So it was just an interesting piece of historical video. I was quite surprised to find the video and see the people inside it and see the methods, etc. Some people are no longer with us. So um, that was quite, uh, quite moving to me to see at that time. Um, but anyway, uh, it gives you some insight into the online learning program and some of its in-depth content. Um, I present both Ba Gua Zhang and Xing Yichuan in a very in-depth and comprehensive manner on the program. Uh, so anybody who's quite interested in learning these arts, whether you're currently studying them or don't have access to a teacher, uh, the Hua Jin online learning program will definitely benef be beneficial to learners of Xing Yichuan and Ba Gua Zhang alike. And I strive to present it in the most comprehensive, clear, and effective and efficient manner to be enabled you as a learner from anywhere that you are to be able to learn thoroughly. A lot of the time the difficulty with a, a distance learning program is the method is less than ideal in terms of learning but I feel that that has a lot to do with the way the content is firstly uh, presented uh, in terms of uh, logical explanation and how it's presented uh, but also the materials themselves if you're using all available technologies to make it as effective and efficient as possible and I strive and I'm quite proud of my ability to do that so if you are interested in learning these arts check the program out I'm quite confident uh, you will not be disappointed I have quite a few people over the last two and a half odd years that the program has been running that have joined and are continuing to join and have remained since they've joined and you know as they they send in videos for me and I give feedback back. 
I'm really happy to see the level of skill that is being developed by a lot of these people through their di diligent training. Uh, it, it, it really makes me happy to see this because in spite of the distance, etc., it just shows me that the program and the methods in which I compile the content and present it is effective and one is able to learn effectively from it. Uh, the link to the online learning program is in the show description. You can sign up through Patreon, which is at patreon.com forward slash Mushin Martial Culture. That's all one word, Mushin Martial Culture. And it's the Hua Jin tier, which is the online learning tier. All right. Additionally, um, as you guys have probably seen, I've set up a Mushin Martial Culture website. Initially, it was to give information about the pre-release of the book, etc., and then to manage the uh, shop for people to be able to order the book. So that's still going, and I'm continually adding content to that. If you go into the About Us sections, etc., even down to information about myself, my teacher, uh, you can find some information there. I will also be adding some more information uh, relevant to the online learning program and gradually expand on the website. However, what I have been working on is the shop section. Initially, the shop section just featured the book in its uh, various formats, hardcover and softcover, and one was able to purchase it through there. But I have slowly started to add apparel and other merchandise. Uh, some of the t-shirts that I used to offer through Teespring are now directly purchasable through this website, and they are not produced by Teespring anymore. I have them produced myself, and I'm happy to, to say that the quality, both in print and of the t-shirt, is far superior uh, than Teespring, and for me, that's paramount, that I am happy with the quality that people purchase. Additionally, I have released some posters, some of the ones that were available previously, Dong Hai Chuan, uh, Yin Fu. Cheng Ting Hua is now available. I have also included uh, a new poster of Li Ziming and uh, the restored and hand colored image of the famous Shanxi Xing Yichuan gathering of Che Jai and Guo Yunshen, uh, which is the cover of my book is also available in poster format there. And again, I produce all of these, I ship them out, I pack them myself to ensure that they are double packed, so they're in double packaging, which makes it basically indestructible when it gets to you, and they are able to be sent anywhere in the world. So there are some interesting things there. I'm gonna be continually adding some of uh, the other products that I had created, including t-shirts and apparel, but one new thing will be coming, and that will be some Chinese martial arts training related merchandise. Now, it won't be run-of-the-mill uh, stuff that you can get basically anywhere. It will be stuff that I find to either be very good or difficult to get or both. For example, eventually when I do have weaponry available, right now the issue with the weaponry is shipping out of uh, out of China is a little bit complicated with uh, swords and things, but I'm, I'm working on that. It won't be the standard floppy spring blade stuff. It'll all be custom made training swords of traditional quality. In other words, there will be solid steel, the fittings, the scabbards, the covers, the handles, the metals used, all are custom made to my requirements. And um, these types of swords I've had made for myself for many, many years. And honestly, you can buy one straight sword or one broadsword and it'll last you forever as long as you take care of it while you're training. It's not something that you're going to be replacing. So for me, I find that these are not only better for training in general, as they have the correct weight, they have the correct tension, they're rigid, the correct feel, um, but also the correct quality. So they're very beneficial to training. Other things that I'm going to be including are things like shoes that are, are compatible or correct for practices of Xing Yi Quan, Ba Gua Zhang, and Tai Ji Quan. Often you find a lot of footwear, let's just say, not being correct for these types of practices. They're more in line with acrobatic wushu stuff. So uh, there will be aspects of footwear, there will be uh, training pants and other things gradually will be included. So I will be working on the website and releasing these things slowly. If you want to be kept up to date with it, go on over to the website mushinmarshallculture.com and sign up for the newsletter and you will be made aware when, when there are new updates and things that come out. But I'm quite confident that the products that I will have available will be beneficial to traditional Chinese martial arts practitioners everywhere and something of value. So keep an eye out for that. In other news, the book is now available on Amazon. The link to get it on Amazon, currently it's uh, in the Americas, North America, uh, are in the show description here. And all the versions are available through Amazon as well. Hardcover, 
softcover, as well as the EPUB ebook version, which is distributed through Amazon. So if you're looking to get a digital version, something for your e-reader, you can get that. Or if you're looking to buy a physical copy of the book and you're an Amazon Prime member, etc., you get all the benefits by buying it through Amazon as well. So go on over there. Alternatively, the best way to get the book is to order it directly from me at mushinmarshallculture.com. Of course, the benefit of Amazon is that if you're in the Americas, you'll get it pretty quickly. Although shipping out of China has been pretty decent, uh, most of the orders have been getting to people internationally in around eight to 10 days. So that's a very good turnaround time as well. So either or, I will put the links to both in the show description and we'll go on from there. Of course, uh, any and all support for the podcast and my other endeavors like the Mushin Martial Culture YouTube channel are appreciated. There are general support tiers on the Patreon site. Uh, so you, if you feel like supporting my works, please do go ahead uh, and go on over to the Patreon site. And uh, if you're able to pledge or a donation, uh, it's highly appreciated. It helps me to continue doing the things that I do. All right, there will be a lot of new releases coming out gradually over the next few weeks as well on the Mushin Martial Culture YouTube channel. I have something that's quite important that I've been working on with regards to Shui Jiao history. In addition to the previous episodes on the hidden history of Shui Jiao, it kind of just ties it all together and sheds some light on the reality of certain things. I think most people are going to be quite happy or rather surprised and shocked to see what I present, but it's a very important document. And um, yes, that should be hopefully in the next week or two released for those of you interested in that part of the history. All right, let's get into today's episode of the Drunken Boxing Podcast. My guest today is Lars Newbom. Lars hails from Sweden and is a Shanxi style Xing Yi Chuan practitioner. I have known him for quite a number of years. Um, I haven't seen him in person for 10 years. The last time I saw him in person was in Beijing 10 years ago when he was training with his teacher who is from Shanxi, but his teacher was working and living in Beijing. So Lars would come through and train with him in Beijing. Um, 10 years ago, we had a really good afternoon of training at my teacher, uh, Di Guoyong's place, and then we did our usual. I had a meal and some drinks together thereafter. It was good times, but I haven't seen him for 10 years, and the pandemic basically made that impossible over the last few years. So this is the first year that he's back, uh, and it's the first time I've seen him since then. And we did this episode of the Drunken Boxing Podcast in person. So it's true to the original intention of the podcast. It's in person with us having a few adult beverages at the same time. It was a great discussion. Very interesting to hear his experiences and perspectives. Lars is somebody who wasn't and isn't involved in Xing Yichuan as a professional career. He is a pure uh, hobbyist who is very passionate about the practice and has stuck to it. So it's quite interesting to hear somebody's perspective on that. And um, I think you guys will enjoy these aspects as we discuss elements of his systems training, his teacher's mentality, his experiences, the overlaps, um, etc. with with other styles and lineages of of Xing Yi. Lars also did live in China quite a few years ago while he was training too, Um, so he has quite a bit of experience in that regard. So without further ado, I give you Lars Newbaum. Okay, welcome to the Drunken Boxing Podcast. I'm really happy to have my old friend Lars Newbaum here, all the way from Sweden. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Good. Nice to see you. And we're doing this in person, so I'm really happy because that's the purpose of the Drunken Boxing Podcast. So cheers. <laughs> and you have just been in Shanxi, Taiyuan yeah. for a month. A month. Yeah. a month. Okay. And how's that been? Um, it's been great. Okay. I love being in Taiyuan. So it's almost a second home. The last it's becoming the second home. Yeah, for sure. The last time you were I mean, we saw each other ten years ago. Yeah. And then the last time you were in Taiyuan was when? Twenty nineteen. Okay, so before uh, the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The summer twenty nineteen. And then the uh, pandemic hit and then I don't know, four years disappeared. Four years disappeared. But three years disappeared and then one year slowly recovering from the right. three years. Right, so, right. Yeah. Right. So while you were um away uh, what was it like not being able to come in? I mean, you obviously wanted You mean to. not not being able to come to China? Yeah. Um, good question, actually. Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't like to be here when it was locked down. Of course. And I didn't want to pay uh, or uh, um, use two weeks of my vacation to sit in the hotel for, as a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, quarantine yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Um, but i mean that aside like the the whole fact that 
you used to come in here quite often. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, it felt like it, it's not good. Yeah. Not good. I mean, it's... Um, Hmm. I haven't really thought about it actually. The, the Corona thing has been. But you never. It no, just happened. Yeah, but you ne at no point did you think it was going to be a forever thing, did you? No, no, no. I always waited. Uh, I always thought that it would stop right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I've also been thinking for uh, quite some time to take my teacher to Sweden or to Europe. Has he been overseas no, before? No, 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 never. Never, never. Okay. Uh, but that also got uh, pushed on hold, right? Right. All that thinking, so. But they weren't even issuing people passports here for, uh, for probably for, not. only recently they started giving passports to only rich people got passports. yeah 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 because <laughs> if you're rich you don't get coronavirus you, of you course see. not yeah really, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but let's get into that so yeah. you mentioned your teacher yeah. so let's get into your background yeah like w w where did it begin how did it begin with martial arts stuff yeah um i started doing judo when I was six Same years as me. old, yeah, 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 I did judo for a while. Uh, I think, I, if I remember correctly, I got the the complete yellow belt. Oh, nice! Yeah, and then yeah. I stopped and started doing uh, football as uh, every other kid in Sweden. Okay. Yeah, and uh, did that for a while, and then at sixteen, I started to practice some kung fu. So between judo and sixteen, you didn't for, do uh, playing for soccer and uh, or football and uh, so just or soccer for the American friends. Uh, yeah, soccer and uh, skateboarding and doing. I mean, being a kid in Sweden doing bad stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. So what made you get into kung fu of all the martial arts? <laughs> Some kind of fascination of Asia, I think. Uh huh. Uh, maybe a little bit of kung fu movies. Uh, my dad he actually told me that we, we used to go to this Chinese restaurant, and I was always as a kid, like super small. Yeah. And I was always fascinated with all the stuff and loved the food and so on and so on. Now in the, now I know that the, that restaurant was not really super. What was were they giving you chop suey? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of ish. <laughs> no, ba bamboo shoots with uh, beef. Okay. <laughs> with some jango uh, fried yeah, together yeah, and yeah. some soy. <laughs> yeah. But it was different enough that it yeah, made yeah, you yeah, interested. Yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of interested about it. And then um, at 16, there was a Kung Fu club in, or Kung Fu club or Wushu Guan or whatever you want to call it now uh, in my hometown. Mm -hmm. That me and my, uh, a couple of friends who went there and started training. And that was... What was it? Uh, what was it? That's a very good question. It was um, a mishmash of a lot of stuff. It was like the Chinese restaurant. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of. But it was pretty good, actually. We, we learned a lot of very, very hardcore training. Mm -hmm. um, usually we trained a lot, and then the warm-up was so long, and our warm-up and conditioning and so on. So then after you, when you started to do the techniques, you, everyone was too tired <laughs> to learn. <laughs> But after a while, you developed uh, uh, quite good conditioning. And this guy, Lennart in Norshipping, he, he had been around for for some time. He learned a lot of different stuff, put shit together himself. Okay. Uh, some good china, some good uh, good kicking. I remember good kicking. So it was good functional things? Well, good functional things, but maybe not uh, the kung fu, kung fu that you may right. practice right, today. Right, right, right. right. Okay. Not not too much fo focus on Gung Li or right. uh, Tier or that kind okay, of stuff. Okay, okay. Uh, and then he also he started to learn ba ba Ji Xuan. Okay. A guy from he married a, a woman up in in uh, Changchun. Okay. Uh, Dong so, yeah, yeah, he got some Ho style uh, Ba Ji Xuan. So I started to learn that a little bit with him. Uh, and he also th this is an interesting thing. He also used to host uh, Uncle Bill, William de Tars. Kunta oh, okay. Salat guy, yeah, yeah. Yes. He used to hold some seminars for him, so we practiced some Kunta Salat as well. And what did was... you? How did you find that? Uh, you mean the school? No, I mean, what did you think of the the Salat? Uh, very syllabus? interesting. Very yeah? interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Super unstructured. Uh, kind of uh, like learning with a Chinese yeah, you <laughs> master. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So it's clear, it's got a, a progressive system to it, it makes sense. Yeah, but I mean, uh, the form is not, never going to look the same twice. Right. <laughs> okay, but I think sometimes that's a good thing, right? Sometimes it's a good thing, but not if you're if you're programmed in the way of uh, Chinese social way of yeah. practicing forms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? 
when all the moves is gonna be the same. Yeah. Uh, uh, practicing with Uncle Bill is like sometimes gonna be here, sometimes gonna be here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that must have been quite an experience training yeah, was, with him. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Yeah. So how did you get into what you're doing now, which is Shanxi Xing Yichuan? Yeah, well, so uh, um, uh, I left my hometown for university. Yeah. I went to Uppsala University and I there I uh, tried to find some someone somewhere to practice. Uh, so I met a couple of people, did some uh, Tsai Li Fu. Okay. Tsai Li Fu, didn't really like it, did some... There were, uh, there were some uh, modern Russian guys tried out, didn't like it. Uh, went to Stockholm to meet this uh, Chinese guy. Uh, it was actually pretty good. Uh, Tsung Ting Tung. Okay. Uh, he does everything. Like Tai Chi, Xing Yi, Barba, Da Chang Chuan. I think Pat, all, Pat studied with him for a while. Right. Yeah. Per uh, Neufeld. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I say his name right? Neufeld. Neufeld. Yeah. You see, I always get that Neufeld. Neufeld. Yeah. So uh, you're you're new bomb and he's new felt. Exactly. That's exactly, it. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and then I I met these I don't I don't remember how I met uh, these tidy guys who practice uh, Yang style tidy uh, from with uh, William Dawkins. Okay. You know William Dawkins. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't he okay. British? American guy. Oh, okay, okay. William okay. S. Dawkins. Right. Oh, right. yeah, you're thinking about the practical tidy. Right. No, 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 this is not the same. So, William Dawkins, William S. Dawkins, if I remember correctly, he practiced with uh, William C. C. Chen? Ho. Ho. Not William C. C. Chen? No, Ho. So, there's two William C. C.'s? Yeah. That's a coincidence of note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you, I, I, don't, I don't know why they named, <laughs> named themselves William, but they did. And C. C. And see, well, well uh, that could be any Chinese yeah, name. Yeah, it could be any Chinese name, you're right. And it could be the old, it could be Pinyin. Or it, it could be, be Wade's child. <laughs> yes. uh, and he, I think from, if I remember correctly, you need to fact check this one. Uh, uh, William C.C. Hu kind of grew up in or close to um, uh, Forbidden City. Okay. Back in the days. Right. So his family practiced tidy and so on. Pretty good. Uh, at and it was Yang style. Yang style, yeah, yeah, yeah Yang style. Um, um, and then they started to talk about people, like, uh, they, they started to mention, they said, like, oh, this Pat guy and this Kent guy, who both practiced with these guys before. Okay. Yeah, they're, like, they're like practicing like, like crazy. Okay. They're like crazy. crazy. Sure. They're, like, practicing. Ooh. I was like, why, why am I practicing here, then? <laughs> So I set off and... Uh, but and Kent I, is where? Kent is in Stockholm now. Yeah, okay. Stockholm. All right, yeah. all right. And, and Per, he lived in Sigtuna then. So he used to host a class in Uppsala. It's like pretty close. Uh, every Wednesday, if I remember correctly. Mm. Yeah. So I managed to reach out and meet both of them. Yeah. Um, and I started to learn some Xingyi with Per. And I did some uh, small style, Shen style with... Uh, Small frame. Small frame, yeah. Small frame chance side with uh, Kent. Okay. And then I wasn't too happy with my chosen major in university. So I said, screw this, I'm going to China. Yeah, that's what most people think <laughs> yeah. when they're not happy with their major in university. <laughs> screw this, I'm going to China. <laughs> so I came to Beijing in uh, 05. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 21 years old. Yeah. That must have been, your parents must have thought you were completely insane. No, I, actually, I, I, I talked with my dad about this. this Did you blame uh, the Chinese before, restaurant? Before I came to China, no, and he, he remembers, I don't remember this conversation. Uh, I asked him if he, if he, what he thought about it, and he was like, you need to go. Well, that's good. You that's need to good. go. Yeah. I mean, this is... This is what you want? No, this is what you want. This is an opportunity. I mean, go out there. I mean, sitting, sitting up in Sweden and think that you understand things. Mm -mm. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and my mother, I don't know, but uh, my mother, she then she used to come here and she studied Chinese herself, and she she goes to China before the before COVID. She used to go to China by herself. No, really, yeah, yeah. traveling around and doing work. Stuff. That's very cool, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's she's into it like you're into it. Not really. I mean, the Chinese language is probably pretty difficult. When you're a bit older, I think it's difficult to learn Chinese. 
Oh, I think it's any language is difficult as yeah, you get probably, older. Probably, yeah, probably, probably, probably. Chinese, probably. probably particularly. Like I had this guy, in, uh, when I, so I came here in 05. I started to ch- st- study Chinese at uh, Yuan Dashi. Uh, right, it's a language, uh, university. language university. Language right. university, And I had this guy from uh, Denmark who was a translator for the European Commission between, I think, with Danish and French and Danish and English. So okay. he was pretty good at the languages, right? Right. Around 50. I don't know if he had been laid off or I don't know how it works, but he had some time so he could go come here to study for free or get paid for it. Maybe he got a scholarship. Maybe There's some of those programs. Yeah, here. but I mean, he was 50, so I think the, the, the scholarship must have been pretty Special. significant. <laughs> <laughs> With a good apartment and uh, the good money going on, right? Yeah. Because if you if you work in the commission, you don't pay any tax. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so uh, but he, he struggled so much. Even though he had such a good language background, right? Right. Such a struggle. Yeah, but I, I, you know, don't you think that that's kind of something we've learned over the time? It doesn't mean that the people with the highest skill are the people that make it. Yeah, or maybe the brain is just... Oh, okay, well, that's yeah, another thing. Yeah. That's another thing. I mean, Chinese language, uh, it's an interesting subject in itself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's easy to... Learn the basics, get some good uh, conversational skill going on. But if you want to take it further, further, I mean, oh. that's a whole rabbit hole yeah, for the rest the, of your life. Yeah, the more you learn, the more you understand it. You don't know yeah. anything, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I say it's like people that go down that road. It's why you know what I like to see. I like to see some of those late seventies, mm. early eighties published books where there's some Westerner translating some ancient, obscure <laughs> Chinese text. And you know that even if the book is like 180 pages, yeah. he spent 45 years of his life going down that rabbit hole. <laughs> and people don't realize that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so... Yeah, going down the Guwen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I took some courses in Guwen. Yeah. Anyway, so in China, I, got, I wanted to learn... I had three things that I wanted to explore. Mm. One was Bagua. Okay. One was Xingyi. One was Baji, because I had some background in Baji, right? Right. Yeah. And then uh, Paris uh, Gunfa brother Yarek uh, introduced me to. Yeah, we had a good conversation. He and he laid out, uh, out some choices. And then he introduced me to New Bagway. Right. Who old school Xingyi, mm-hmm. Taiji Bagua, Liu Huaqian guy, Simon Water Show. Right. Uh, Simon, four peoples, the oldest uh, Water Show. Society, which was society in Beijing, and you know where it was headquartered. Yeah, Ho, 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 Ho Shen Miao. Ho Shen Miao, yeah, yeah. yeah, the fire god temple. Uh, I've actually got a. I was trying for the last. Is it, is two, it open? Yeah. So when are you leaving? Tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Yeah. Shit. Okay. Anyway, yeah. So I've been planning to go film some stuff there mm. because it's got a very, very yeah, deep nice. history, right? Nice, nice, so nice, it's just, nice. just with the flooding and a little yeah, bit of shit, yeah. and I don't want to go when it's so hot and whatever. Yeah. But there's some interesting history. Like, I remember being told years ago, and I don't know how true this is. That's, you know, the stories within the martial arts society and the community in Beijing. They say that when Guo Yunshen actually came to try fight with Dong Hai Chuan, yeah. it was Cheng Tinghua who came in in the middle between them. Uh-huh. And he wouldn't let him go to see Dong Hai Chuan. And they met at the. Hey, yeah, okay. And according to the story, Guo Yunshen tried to punch Cheng Tinghua, and Cheng Tinghua moved, and Guo Yunshen hit the door frame. And as far as I've heard, there's still a mark on the door frame. Wow. So I want to go look. You know, I've been there before, but I've been there before I actually I've been heard. outside. Yeah, I've okay. been inside. Yeah, so, yeah, it's an interesting place, but that's where I the mean, society I mean, back was. back then, uh, when they had their... Uh, Alleged, who knows? Uh, who led alleged people? Yeah, uh, the Simon Water Show should have been around, no? It was, yeah, it started yeah. in 19. Yeah, oh, 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 well, I mean, we know that oh, Chong Tinghua oh, also taught there, yeah, 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 yeah. so yeah. he was teaching there too, so uh, uh, yeah, very interesting. So, I uh, practiced with Nuba Wei for a while, uh, three, four years, and what was that like? Um. I mean, how old was he when you started training with him? Oh, 
Oh, good question. Good question. I don't remember when he was born. Mid seventies, maybe. And you were how old? Twenty-one. And what was that like? Uh, and we also had the language barrier, of course. I mean, he, language he barrier. Speaking, speaking yeah. Chinese. Yeah, yeah. And I brought my friend who was, is pretty good Chinese, and I also had a couple of other guys practicing there, and they couldn't even understand it because he has he used he had a very thick Kobe accent, accent. <laughs> super thick. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. Uh, but uh, I did what I uh, what he told me to do, and I came up early. I went there early and practiced a lot, and so on and so on. Mm. Um, I remember Pat and he felt he came to he came to China for business I had probably practiced with you by the way for two two years mm. and Pat was like what, what have you learned and I was like I've done Pi Chuan and Bong Chuan in two years <laughs> yeah. Pi Chuan and Bong Chuan <laughs> <laughs> what did Per say he was like oh okay <laughs> old school uh, but uh, yeah old school but of course I learned uh, a lot of the material but mm. at that time I didn't I understood that uh, the stuff that I learned before had been too how do you say it in English mm. scattered uh, scattered yeah. yeah so I had to I had to bring it back I need to, I had to find some some way of developing some of the gung fu or mm. yeah uh, so I was doing Actually, New Way was quite funny. It was like a pee bong pop. That's all you need. That's it? Yeah. All the other stuff, uh, like uh, all the Taolu and stuff, that's only to keep uh, students interested if you want to teach for money. <laughs> yeah, that's but the... you know, I mean, like we were talking <laughs> that, earlier yeah, before, yeah, yeah. you know, it is kind of true, right? Yeah. I mean, if you do all the individual components individually, repetitively, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Taolu is just like remembering the sequence. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? But then I also I started. But why Pibong Pao? Did he elaborate on that? Uh, no. no, or maybe he did, but I didn't understand it all. And his, <laughs> let, let, well, even though my Chinese, uh, mm. I had studied Chinese two years full full time, I still couldn't really. Right, <laughs> but his it. his P Chuan has Zhuan P, right? Yeah, yeah regular Huabi P Chuan. So good. So that's P Zhuan, Pibong yeah. Pao. Yeah, there we have it. And then Hung is when Hung you is when you mix them because it's everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. So he's right. Of course he's right. <laughs> Right. Yeah, but uh, that that also some people think that the bungchen is just a, a pachen is a, a bung with something going on up here. Yeah, uh, that's not a bungchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, no, got, that's not a pachen. Sorry, that's not a pachen. But it's got that uh, horizontal uh, lateral movement. Which... Yeah, in Huabei you have it. We we practice in Shanxi. We practice the power straight. Shunbu, shunbu. Uh, or well, uh, the jiao chapu, we call it jiao chapu. Like, yeah, so we do that too, though. I mean, we have variations. We have mm -hmm. shunbu, albu. We have straight line and crossing. So uh, th this line we call shashing uh, bu. Okay, so snake, yeah, snake, yeah. I mean, you, snake shape. You can do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Once it's alive, Sweet, it goes yeah. everywhere. Yeah, Sweet, it goes yeah. everywhere. Yeah, uh, but um, so and then I s I met with uh, New Bagway's older disciples a lot. Mm. And then I also started to practice with uh, Joba Kun, his oldest disciple. I think mm -hmm. it's, if not, I think he's the Kaiman uh, Todi of okay. New Bagwe. Yeah. Uh, very good, very good. I uh, started practicing with him and his, his Todi men, they were kind of a little bit older than me, but so suddenly I had people with some experience who mm. uh, also had some intensity in their training, right? And that was, that was really good. And uh, Joe Bakun, he's, he used to teach uh, from his work. And he used to work at, uh, or he worked at this uh, hospital in the heating central. Okay. So we used to go to the heating central and then they had the basement that was completely empty. That must have felt great. Uh, that was uh, like in the movies, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it was a bit dangerous also because you had all the machinery laying yeah. around. And, uh, yeah. We did a lot of toy show and they used to bring up pass. Not any sparring, uh, if I remember correctly, no. Uh, but it's a good power training. A lot of, a lot Testing, of stuff down feeling. In. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of. Uh, and also with people the same age or a bit or a little bit older than you. Okay. Yeah. That was kind of missing in the uh, New Bagway's uh, public classes, so to speak, practicing in the park. 
then I started to realize, okay, practicing in the park and practicing for real is different. Two different things. Yeah. yeah. But I also think, and this is a thing that I think people don't realize, is like different stages of life of the teacher is also different in terms of oh, his yes. focus oh, of yes. teaching. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, they, uh, in the park at least, they were obsessed about pushing people without them, without them feeling it or mm. being hurt by mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I was like, why are we doing this? You're supposed to hurt your opponent. Yeah, I mean, you're just moving him. I understand that it's a, it's a bit, it's a, it's a high skill of pushing someone a long way. Yeah. Without, without them being hurt. Okay. Hmm. What about the bungshot? Yeah. <laughs> We're not pushing anyone with that. <laughs> exactly. 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 So um, uh, that was good. That was great. Uh, then uh, 2008, I decided to go back to Sweden. Mm. So you were here from when to when? 2005 to 2008. Yeah. Uh, and then um, for different reasons, I wanted to. I was 24. I felt like shit. I need to do some more university. Do something with your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you could feed yourself. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And uh, also the Olympics made it hard for, because between 2007 and 2008, I was working in the uh, travel industry, right? Mm. I was doing some tour leading, taking Swedish tours around China. Mm. And I had some sketchy visas. Really? <laughs> uh, I used to call this guy Visa, visa Jack. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> issue, issue of the X, no, not uh, F, F visas. Final All right. F visas from Qingdao. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good guanxi over there yeah but then uh during the uh, b just before the olympics they were like okay look, we need to clean this up yeah 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 uh, they cleaned everything up yeah they cleaned up they cleaned up well man uh, i don't know if you remember some of the outskirts of beijing what they were doing just before the olympics i mean those communities mm. and they were just like smashing them <laughs> completely flattening them yeah, i mean it's ugly N need to make it look pretty. I know, but you know, I mean, mm. there are people living there for generations, mm. right? Uh, so. Not anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's easy to become cynical about. It those is things. easy. I used to live. Uh, we used to live. Uh, me uh, and a friend. We used to live down in close to Golo in the Right. Hutongs. Right. Right. Okay. So there's a little uh, bit different. Uh, 2007, 2008 at uh, that time, and uh, they were like painting. Oh, the walls gray, and we're like they're already gray. Gray, uh, it's a gray. Uh, yes, uh, but uh, I mean they did it, and then I think they they uh, my mother. I remember my mother being angry about it because they the uh, Gulo uh, Gulo and uh, the drum tower and the clock tower, right? Yeah. So there used to be squares that, there. People, uh, I mean, people living there doing Chinese people things. Yeah, in the squares, right? Dancing, dancing, do whatever. So they build these walls close to the entrances of these people's homes. Oh, yeah. So you didn't. So you didn't didn't have to look into. You don't their see house. it. You didn't see see the what the ping pong looks like. Looks right. like, right? So yeah. I think the Hutong or the place where we lived, it's completely smashed now because they built the. Um, uh, subway station. Yeah. Uh, the one that goes down to Shuchai. Yeah, 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 yeah. Number eight. Anyway, so I went back to Sweden and then 2009 I went back to China during the summer for training with uh, Joe Bakun, New Bagwe and everyone. Mm -hmm. And then some of the guys that I used to practice with uh, together with New Bagwe, they were like, hey, you know, I think you should go and check out this guy. Trust that guy from Shanxi. I mean, that's weird. Uh, it's super weird. Yeah. It's very weird. Never mind from that lineage, but in Beijing. Yeah, yeah. Actually, when, during, uh, when, when I practiced with New Bagwe, he had a student who was from Taigu. Okay. Who practiced Chia style as well. And there was, there was some rumors about another Chia style guy. Uh, some people told me some Chia style. I was like, where is this, these people in Beijing? Mm. Uh, uh, but anyways, so yeah, it's it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. So I went to meet him, and uh, I was like, okay, okay. 
How how old was he? It was fifty. Two thousand fifty six. Okay. Fifty six. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. This stuff. This is maybe what thing is supposed <laughs> to be like. <laughs> yeah. And I did some bunch, and he was like, "What? What are we pushing?" Ah. Twisham. Right, right. Uh, Wrong power. Bung. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I started to learn that one at the same time as I did with the other ones. And at that time, I used to have like my knees were hurting as hell. Mm. I had a lot of knee knee problems. From before? From be- no, well, practicing a lot, I guess. Uh-huh. Uh, probably practicing a little bit not correct. Yeah. And uh, maybe not getting alignment. the corrections, alignment, right, and so on. And that, I mean, it's very difficult to understand the alignment yourself yeah. when you're pretty fresh on the, with the stuff, right? Uh, and I started to do the trust that, and I mean, my knees stopped hurting, mm-hmm. body felt great. Uh, I mean, that was that's an interesting thing you say because when I started training with mm. with D-Lash, you had right? all the Wusha injuries. I had all I had knee surgeries already yeah. before that. I mean, I used to walk up the stairs and my knees would hurt. And the first thing he started working on was my yeah. knees, and he was like, "We're gonna do this. You're gonna do it like this." And, yeah. that. and three months later, I was like, "My knees are like Superman now," you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it makes a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and my knees were great, and yeah. So we practiced, and then in 2010, I went back to China. Uh, did part of my masters here. Okay. Continued to practice it. Uh, and he was living in Beijing. He was living in Beijing. He came to Beijing through some kind of I don't know how we got that work. Probably. I have no idea. <laughs> but one of those uh, energy companies. Yeah. And when uh, we say energy, we mean coal. Uh, coal, coal or gas <laughs> from Shanxi, right? Uh, of course. Coal or gas from Shanxi. One of those energy companies, and he came. Being like 56, that's like probably already a retirement Close to. for Close to. a yeah. worker because he used to be a worker. Yeah. Um, and he, he he stayed in Beijing for eight years. Yeah. Uh, so he stayed way past uh, retirement age because I think he liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you can get paid, make some money. Yeah, I mean, he was he was he was doing the. Um, I, I think it was officially the cook. For the company. Okay. For the Bangonshu or the Paitrosua. Uh, the detachment office or whatever yeah. you call it, right? Uh, and then he did uh, all kind of stuff. Yeah. So he had a lot of spare time. So when I went back in 2010, I was like, okay, let's practice then. When was it that I saw you? 2010? 2013. 13. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, so, man. 10 uh, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 2010, I was uh, do I was pursuing a master's degree at Tsinghua. Okay. Uh, and uh, he was living down in uh, uh, west of uh, Tsuruyar. Yeah. Um, uh, Shangri La Hotel next to Shangri La okay. Hotel. Oh, there. So I used to take my bike from Tsinghua all the time down there, like three times. During the week, and then the, we used to practice in in the morning of uh, Saturday and Sundays. Yeah, yeah, like normal. Like normal. Yeah. yeah, but not in the park, in the separate thing that they had outside of there. Were there others training with you? No. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back then, yeah, yeah, a lot, yeah. a lot, a lot. So people had heard of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like ex-military guys, uh, uh, bodybuilders, oh, ex bodybuilders, uh, sh- uh, Sanda guys. Uh, oh, that's cool. Because uh, yeah. that's a completely. I mean, you were training with New Baogui and his group, and New Baogui was already very old at that uh, time, so it's a very different. I mean, Joe Bakun and them, they were great, but I mean, they, they didn't really have the intensity that yeah. I was looking for, to be honest. Yeah. And I think at uh, your age, and especially yeah, at your stage, you need that. You could, yeah. all, as you get older, things change. Uh, I mean, let's not. Yeah, pretend. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm completely fine with yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, but I remember, I was like, okay, buy a show or not buy a show. I was like, should I? I don't know for your audience. Uh, no, buy a show know, just become an official disciple yeah. ceremony. I was very reluctant of being becoming one because I didn't know if I would stay in China or go back or right. how, how I would pursue this stuff. Right. Uh, 
um, because it, back in 2008 with uh, Jobba Kunnel, them they wanted me to become a disciple, and I was like, yeah. But you didn't. I, I don't know if this is for me. So that. Ah. Not to say that they are bad or anything. Yeah. I really like what they are doing, but they maybe not for me, right? Okay. Uh, but with uh, Zhang Yichun and my ship with Zhang Yichun, it's like okay, okay, and then try to fight him a couple of times um, behind closed doors or only me and him. And how did that go? Not very well for me. <laughs> for you, <laughs> very good friend. <laughs> And I was like, okay. <laughs> This is the one. <laughs> okay. Cut off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I cut off, yeah. Did you do a public ceremony, a private ceremony? I was kind of private. Yeah, I see, mean, my yeah, first yeah, one yeah. was too. We did a public one years later, but I remember privately being in his home. And no, he we, called we, me for dinner. Oh, and okay. he told nice, me. Nice, yeah, nice, so. nice, nice one, nice one, nice one. Uh, I mean, my, 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 my shrew is not... Uh, super famous or anything. Yeah. So I mean, the paisha is It's that okay. we had was in a small restaurant close to where we okay. practice. Okay. It was me and two two other guys. Yeah, one of the ex-military guys. One nice. Mashadi, very good, nice guy. He still trains. One ninety, super strong. One meter ninety, ex-military <laughs> and super strong. <laughs> Him and me used to practice uh, the dueda, the, oh, okay. the, the, the dueda that we have in Chester. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we practice it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he must me, have had... me being a 177, I mean it. Yeah, he must have had reach, a reach uh, yeah, So I had to practice my bufa, my, my <laughs> stepping method. Yeah, you can buy a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Or a spear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. So that's the background, I guess. Uh, the 30 minutes of background. No, no, that's good. Yeah. What did you find different between the systems, not particularly the physicality, because age is, I'm yeah, taking yeah, age yeah. out of it. But I mean, Joba Kong was only in his 50s as well. All right. Uh, I, th I think the difference was that Zhang uh, Yichuan, uh, he was still practicing himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, the method, the gong, not 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 maybe the the, the how the five elements, yeah, twelve and uh, five elements of twelve elements, not that stuff, but different gong fa, gong fa, yeah, skill building practices, yeah, exactly the gong fa. I mean, super elaborate. I know that you guys have a lot of gong fa as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I know that your your chef also collects a lot of gong fa. Yeah, and he's very serious about yeah, it. Yeah, the yeah. same with the trust. I mean, the fingers have their gong fa. Yeah, the, everything has a gong fa. Exactly. Uh, and it's like, okay. And from your experience, what difference does it make? And it's like it's like my uh, my chef explains it. It's like with Xing Chuan, Xing Chuan is like a gun, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to have the shape of the gun, the gun, that's the shape, the frame. Yeah. And then you need to have the bullet and then you need to have the gunpowder. Mm -hmm. And you need to have all three components in order to be, to have the, Something uh, that the, works. Gear, the, yeah. the, the power, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of, uh, no offense, Huawei style that I've uh, encountered in Beijing, they only have the gun. They lack the gunpowder. Kung The like gun powder that, that that's the gun. Right? Exactly. Open up the body. Shang, no, I Shang completely Bang, agree. All, all this stuff like. I completely right? agree. I completely uh, it was like, agree. It was mind blowing. Uh, and also a guy like 56 years old. I was 20, 25. It's like how the hell can you move three times faster than me? Yeah. I've been practicing martial arts since 16. What the hell are you doing? Yeah. I'm gonna hit you now. <laughs> <laughs> and he turned. It's like super. Super casual guy, super nice, very friendly. And then when it comes to the fighting stuff, animal. <laughs> I've never been a, that scared in my life. Oh, really? Yeah, but but that's not in, in public. Only me and him, right? Yeah. But you, you're and hundred... him, and also it's, it's Shingi Meta. Yeah. It's, so not, it's not like it, he's changing. It's stuff. not some one by two. Yeah, 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 that yeah. stuff. It's it's like okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I, I found the same thing. And I don't think it's a problem with regional problems. I think it's a generational problem, yeah, yeah, but also, a, you know, a lineage issue. Definitely not a uh, regional problem. Because there, in Shanxi, there's, there's a lot of shit. Of course. Shit of course, well. of course. But I found, like you said, that if you're not doing the Kung Fa, yeah. 
everything else is meaningless. It's completely meaningless. It's empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it's like we discussed earlier, it's the tzitzau. Like, uh, yeah, exercise. Exercise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, you're, when you started learning with your, your, your mm, current shirfo, jang shirfo, yeah. was there anything that you found that was completely different? Or was it just a refinement issue? Well, uh, um, <laughs> the one thing is that our uh, room man entered the gate method. Yeah. Is Bungchan. Okay. Requirement is Bungchan one year. Okay. So I was back at doing Bungchan. So you're back to Bungchan. <laughs> <laughs> so the Bungchan for one year. Yeah. Anything specific? About the Bungchan? Yeah. Um, uh, the focus on Hua uh, Li. Okay. Like, uh, I don't know how to, tr how to translate it. Like, the focus on Hua Li is much more ev evident than. Closing like, power. Closing power, yeah. Okay. This, this type of power, right? When you talk about Hua Li, because you're doing movements and yeah, they yeah, can't yeah, see yeah, it, yeah, obviously they can't see it. What are you doing with your hands and your elbows? The closing. Uh -huh. Closing power. Isn't that interesting? Uh, because uh, you know there's a lot of misunderstanding about the elbows today i i i, I, I don't mean, what do you mean, mean yeah no people think that the elbows aren't important they don't have to be drawn in like this why not <laughs> exactly my question <laughs> why not <laughs> how can you do this without that i mean it's ridiculous to think otherwise well, but this guy is uh, chen yeah. It's going down. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. Otherwise, you can't have this power. But the drawing power back. Or the, the pushing the push power. power. Exactly. Exactly so. No, no. I mean, I'm not. I'm not I don't know, Byron. I'm not on the internet. You're like not this. on the internet. So yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. I mean, how That's do you? That's one. That's one. Yeah. Uh, another one is probably the, the the focus on the spine. Okay. Uh, and I'm not talking about esoteric da uh, Dantian movements. Right. I'm talking about uh, Shangin Bargo. Um, <laughs> please translate no, to the no, audience. No, no, try explain it from your perspective. Um, uh, stretch the tendons and uh, um, embrace the uh, uh, the bones. Okay, well, we're talking about the spine. The spine. So exactly. extension and compression. Extension and compression, but also that you need to extend the spine. In order for it to be, be like, a, I can only do this in Chinese, man. <laughs> Go ahead. No. <laughs> and also the ribs, the ribs. How do the ribs actually interact with the spine and all yeah. this type of stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to say, not to, this is important, but then the shapan, the lower stuff is even more important. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. The base, the lower base. That, yeah. That's uh, that's usually... Uh, Lower base is usually how you determine if you have someone has gone for Gung Li or not. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. But then, but then also, I would say that one difference is um, um, the way that the upper body moves and interacts and how it, sh how it, how it changes. Mm -hmm. That stuff was, was a bit different. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like a lot of uh, Shenfa. Body Shen mechanics. Shen yeah, body mechanics. Shenfa, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were yeah, just doing e e even even the bunch one is a bit different, like super stretched stretched out, right? Right. But this is only gonfa. This yeah. is not fight. Yeah, yeah, only yeah. Gonfa. This is developing skill. Yeah, yeah. Which Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like that. That again, what you've just shown here. Again, people can't see it, but yeah. it's so interesting to see that you're going over the same line. Yeah, 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 that's Bungchen. That is Bungchen, right? Yeah, yeah. You're going over the same line. I mean, if you uh, grab, grab a spear and then you will exactly. find out. <laughs> exactly, exactly, <laughs> doing it right or exactly. Exactly. So you did Bungchen focus on these aspects for a year before moving on. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And what did you find? What did you develop? What did you feel? Uh, the the gunpowder. You found the gunpowder. Yeah. <laughs> I was not pushing stuff anymore. Okay, so good. Actually, bung. Breaking stuff, <laughs> <laughs> crushing things, yeah, crushing things, and, and 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 I mean it could be, it doesn't have to be in the hand per se. Yeah, it could, it could be, be the here, elbow. It could be here. It could, it could be here. It, uh, elbow. It should be the shoulders. The shoulder. It could be in toy show stuff. It could be the footwork that you develop through our footwork. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. very good. But I had a lot of background, so I mean. <laughs> 
difficult to say. I mean, some of my Shrisong D, they are still stuck in the Bungchan phase. Mm -hmm. They're still there. Well, this is the thing that people also seem to forget that three students under the same teacher will not develop the same level mm -hmm. of skill. So, yeah. But then after that, I mean, Pi Chen, Chuan Chen, Tao Chen, Hong Chen. And then we do a lot of partner drills. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chao style, at least our style, it's the Wu Hua Pao. Right. And Pi Wu Xing, which is also called the Wu Xing Pao. Yeah. That's the two, two, two main ones. Wu Xing Pao. Uh, do you, you obviously do the classical Dui Lian routines, right? Like, which one? Which ones do you do? I mean, I mean we do Wu Hua Pao. And we have a Wu Hua Pao Dai Tui with kicking. With kicking. Yeah. And then we have the Pi Wu Xing. Or AKA Wu Xing Pao. Right. I don't know why they call it Pi Wu Xing, but they do it. Everyone else calls it uh, Wu Xing Pao. That's interesting. In Taiwan, they call it Pi Wu Xing. And then. Um, uh, An Shen Pao? I, we call it Ai Shen Pao. Yeah, in Shanxi, it's Ai Shen Pao. Ai Shen Pao, we have it. And we have the Wu Zai Liu Shui. And then we have. I just learned it actually this time. From mm -hmm. uh, one of my shibo. Martial <laughs> uncle. Older, Older uncle. Older uncle, yeah. yeah. Liu Chui. Six hammers. Yeah. It's awesome. I'm going to show, you, okay. show it to you later. And then we have the Jiu Tao Kwan that everyone has forgot. Right. And then we have the Jiu Quan. That's about it, I think. I think from child style, they usually talk about 12, uh, 12 partner forms. Okay. Uh, but uh, my my branch or the people my shrimp and his uh, shrimp young they like school all this we're gonna do wu ka pao yo yong that that one is useful pi wu xing that one is useful liu uh, chui that one we now remembered and the wu ka pao dai tui okay and that one is pretty cool yeah. what what is the dai tui part of your wu ka pao that's different from the other version uh, it, actually it's kind of it's kind of difficult it's not the regular wu ka pao. Mm -hmm. It uh, it's more Shaolinish, I would say. Is it though? Probably because uh, Chai Jai had the uh, the Shaolin back one as well. Mm -hmm. So that one is like one oh, high low high, bang hammer fist hammer fist bang, but then the kicking. So it only only on has one kick. Only so, one kick. <laughs> yeah. So it's what about Dai Tui. Do you have Yun Yang Tui? Uh, I've learned the kicks, but I haven't learned the form. Okay. Yeah. It was interesting because um, I think it was two months ago. Mm. Uh, my teacher's old hometown in Hebei, mm. which is one of the main places uh, here. Actually, this you see this T-shirt I'm wearing. Chou Jiao Fan. This. Oh yeah. Gu Lao Fan. They had some unveiling of a monument mm. for the people that took Chou mm. Jiao uh, Fan Zi to Shanxi out. Of Hebei, ah, yeah, Wu Bin Lo, and the ah, people yeah, who brought yeah, it to yeah, Beijing, yeah, yeah. and my teacher studied with Wu Bin Lo too, yeah, but he's also from there, yeah, yeah. so he did some stuff when he was young. Uh, um, and I went there, and there was uh, Bu Xue Quan's grandson. Okay, Bu Bing Chen. Yeah, he uh, was there, and he had a student who came with him, and they were doing Yun Yang Tui. Yeah, hmm. but he was doing it was basically like Chuo Jiao, but not extended at all. Yeah, but I mean, you could see that it was Chuo Jiao. Hey, you could yeah, see nice, it. Nice, 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 nice. So I don't know how much of the. I mean, my Shifu has not learned it as that. We have the kicking methods, like uh, yeah. breaking people's <laughs> shins. <legs>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, actually, my my Lao Shi uh, Li Fu Yan, mm -hmm. he, he, what I've heard, he was famous for. Uh, three things, if I can remember all three. No, one was his uh, Ban Shou Pao. Mm -hmm. The second one is Yuan Yang Jiao. Okay. Yeah. So they call it Yuan Yang Jiao. Yeah, Yuan Yang Jiao for them is like one kick does not come along. Yeah. It comes in pairs. Yeah. yeah. But but also if you look at Chuo Jiao's um, basic theory, mm -hmm. one kick does not come alone, it comes with a fist. Ah, nice, nice. So nice, it's, a, it's nice, a similar nice, kind nice, of nice, idea, yeah, right? We have the, this yeah. one, the three, three things come at you at once. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But actually, I met, I met one of, uh, he must have, he told, he said that he was Li San Yuan's, my, also my Lao Shi old 
Mm-hmm. We're going for grand teacher, yeah. Student, which is impossible because he was too young. Yeah. And he must have been uh, the same generation as Mashui. Anyways, I uh, met him in the park uh, this uh, Saturday. And he knew the set. Mm-hmm. And I was like, teach me. Okay. And I learned a little bit. Okay. I learned okay. some of the movements. Uh, like the, the back kick. Right. Uh, Holy out way. Yeah, Holy out way. It was like this. Oh, that's small. Okay. And this one was supposed to hit the ah, face. And okay. I was like, come on. <laughs> you know, I found it quite interesting. How are you going to hit the face like that? If you look at that, you... Holy yeah, out Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But his was like this. That's small. <laughs> and I kick him with the heel. You know, I found that, like, when I was talking to my Shervo as well, because mm. he, he did he did Chuo Jiao with, yeah. with, with Wu Binlo, and I was asking about that kick over the years, mm. because I did long fist before, yeah. and I did Cha and Tan Tui and whatever. So when I started learning with my teacher, I had no interest to learn any of the Chuo Jiao. Yeah. So I'm not a Chuo Jiao. I'm not a Chuo Jiao practitioner in any shape or form, but I was watching how he would show some people that would learn Chuo Jiao very very random they wouldn't come often i mean there weren't many of them yeah. and the up kicking is what most people focus on yeah. but my teacher would teach the up down kick. Yeah, yeah. and the slamming of the but foot isn't down it, isn't it also a throw it is it can be a throw right yeah it can be a throw as well oh, no. but also the downward part yeah. of the kick going into the floor yeah. which he would say is part of the training of your foot to be able to kick forward yeah, yeah. so it's interesting yeah it's interesting. Great training. I don't want to do totally. it, but it sounds good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, if I was 20 years younger when I started with him, I would have. But I'd done so much yeah. kicking by that point. I was like, oh, no. Yeah. Your legs uh, yeah. or hips would probably I've done enough already. kicking. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but I I would really like to learn the different sets. Uh, and I, I know the, the some of the separate kicks, mm-hmm. how to practice them. Mm-hmm. But I would really like the whole set that uh, Lee Fortran... Put right. together after being kicked by the Chodia guy, right? Well, my teacher has a similar story that he told me why he started doing Chodia was because uh, he got he kicked, kicked by a Chodia guy. I... And then he went to his shivo and he's like, I know that there's the style Chodia funds and I will be low teaches it and I'd like yeah. to learn from it. He's but like, will be low. Will be low is my good friend. I'll take you. Okay. And he took him. So, Great. Yeah. So that, that, I mean, different, different time, different yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine. Same thing. Yeah. But imagine. The good kicking method. Being told, oh. You want to learn from Wu Bin Lao? He's my friend. I'll take you through. And going through and like, yeah, I'll teach you. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> In today's... Wu Bin Lao? I mean, hey, come on. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I mean, okay, so what are we drinking? Uh, Yanjing Pi Jiu. Okay, what is Yanjing? Yanjing Pi Jiu. All right, so these are two interesting... Very, very Beijing. Very Beijing, very interesting things. Two things. Yanjing Pi Jiu, Yanjing Beer. So... Explain your experience and what Yanjing beer is. Uh, Yanjing beer, the, this one, not the, not the Chun Chung or the all the, that kind of stuff. Yeah, the, the plain one. The plain one, regular one, that's the, the, that's the, the beer for the people. Exactly, exactly. What the, it? And the New Lanshan Arlotol, all right. we're drinking. That one is also for the people, but for people who can't drink the Hongxin. The red star one. Exactly. So th- <laughs> these are both Beijing brands of alcohol. Yeah. Yanjing is an old name for Beijing. Yeah. Um, and it's, if you come to Beijing, I know a lot of people, when they think about Chinese beer, they think about Qingtao or however the hell they yeah, call it in the West. Um, Qingtao. Qingtao. Uh, but that's from Shandong. In Beijing, people drink Yanjing beer, yeah. which is, uh, in my opinion, better than Qingdao, yes, but it agree. could be. Especially this one. Yeah, it could be that I'm but from, I'm biased. Yeah, I'm probably biased too. You know, I, I have fond memories of going to my Shifu's home after training and then just having a crate of these. It's light, it's tasty, and uh, yeah, it goes well with food. Niu Lan Shan Er Guo Tou. Er Guo Tou is a very peculiar kind of white bai jiu. Or, yeah, Yeah. Uh, white spirit, what you'd kind of think of sake, but Chinese sake. But anyway, Chinese sake is like not really the correct thing. New Lan Shan, the one we're having is the green label. And it has a really good flavor. Mm-hmm, it has. And, and it's, it's and not it's expensive. Cheap. And it's not expensive. So. It's like 10, 15 RMB a bottle. Exactly, exactly. As you said, it's the one that turns people into... Alcoholics. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. So, 
And what is the percent on this? I'm 42. Never, it is 42. Only right? 42. Yeah. So It's not like the Hongxing. The Hongxing 56, the, the real uh, blue color blue color liquor of uh, Beijing, that one uh, turns you into a monster. Yeah, yeah. It destroys your liver too. <laughs> it destroys everything. Yeah. All right. So cheers. Cheers, <laughs> cheers for that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So getting back into your into yeah. your tale. Where were we? You were talking. We were talking about Bung Chuan Ruman. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Bung Chuan one year, and then stuff opens. I mean, after you cut off by sure. Yeah. And then you're into the gate, and then everything changes. Yeah. What changed for you? Uh, uh, training method. Uh, Personal, I, I mean the how do you say it? the attention to details. Mm -hmm. Relationship. The, a relationship, of course, of course. Mm. I mean, by sure is. Uh, if you look at it, the way that I look at it, it's a very serious thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of Chinese people nowadays they by sure and then they don't really study. I they don't know, disappear. I, yeah, I don't know about. Your he doesn't have so many people that buy shared, but I must say the last batch of people was not his usual kind of yeah, group yeah. of people. Yeah, yeah I mean, in my trip, he has uh, accepted a lot of students or a lot of uh, disciples, which actually favors him. I think it's good for him compared mm -hmm. to some of his shibo, like um, some, uh, some of my shibo, my older uncles. uncles. Who has been super picky, only one or two, and they don't practice, and then you're screwed, right? Yeah. So my sure will probably accept maybe 40 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's roughly uh, the same. And uh, some of them practice good, some of them practice not so a lot. But uh, then again, I mean, being, being a disciple sometimes in China, nowadays, it's not about practicing, it's about the connection and the, uh, the family type of vibe right, and so on. Right, right. For my shovel, it's pretty good. I uh, just, hey, I need a ride somewhere. <laughs> and then there's this guy who just lives in the same neighborhood. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a really nice car. <laughs> yeah. I think um, two things. Mm. One, the real meaning of Baishu is not really well understood in the West. No, 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 not at all. At least uh, what we see on the internet. And two, Baisha in China is not what it used to mean. No. Yeah. That's why, that's why I was uh, super conflicted about it. Right. Because I, ha I had some kind of an ideal of what it meant. Right. And what it did, what did it mean? What did you think that ideal was? Uh, responsibility. That's perfect. I mean, that's exactly the word that's I That's exactly the, the, what it is. That is what it in is. It's responsibility. traditional, yes. Yeah. Uh, and I was a bit afraid that I couldn't to take the responsibility because yeah. I have a lot of other stuff that I need to do and I want to do and so on. I can't move to Shanxi tomorrow. Yeah. And what, what should I do there? Yeah. I'm pursuing. I'm, I'm also pursuing a career in different fields. So yeah. I mean, so. Uh, for me right now, I've kind of accepted that Xing uh, Chan will be a hobby, mm -hmm. and it took maybe ten years to accept that one. If I would have met my uh, my current shifu when I was 21 and I just got to China, Different. okay, I might have been living in Taigo now, right? Yeah. No, in worry, Taigo, maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm kind of happy that, that 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 I didn't meet him at 21, that I met him when I was 25. Yeah. Uh, but what does that mean to you, a hobby? It's not gonna. It's not gonna going to be my profession. But it's gonna be something with you for the rest yeah, of your yeah, life. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's yeah. gonna be a practice that I do all the uh, all the time. And why? That, this is a good question that I pondered on many times. Mm -hmm. over. Uh, and the thing about Xing Chuan, it's like yes, you have the combat stuff. Yes, you have the, te uh, the, 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 the um, physical. Duan Lian. Mm -hmm. Shit, even my English is shit now after a one month in uh, Shanxi. I think it might be the Baijiu. 
I might be the bike. <laughs> That's why that's why the Chinese come out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Duan Lian, right? Um, physical training. Physical training. Or exercise. You have, you have the history stuff, which is quite interesting. Mm-hmm. You you research yourself a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah. You have the philosophical stuff. Yes. Which is not bad. Yeah. I'm not saying that in Xinjiang you will uh, find a philosophy that is worth of pursuing for your whole life, but the different concepts in Xinjiang can open up a little bit of other stuff. And en- enrich then, your life too. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. And that's kind of how my practice has been for a long time. It's like martial arts. Kung Fu, Nei Gong, Health, Philosophy, I'm tired of fighting. I don't care about fighting. Mm. I'm going to do, I don't know, do some uh, uh, meditation stuff yeah. that we learned. Or some of this crazy esoteric negon stuff that we mm-hmm. have. I'm gonna do that instead. And then I mean, it, it, it can vary. It can differ yeah. depending yeah. on what you're you're after. Yeah. But at every stage that you just mentioned, mm. would you say that each one of those enrich your life in general? Even even if you were at the fighting stage. Yes. So I think that's the true Definitely. value. Yeah. Oh, uh, fighting is the most uh, enriching thing that you can yeah. do. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It might hurt a little, but I mean, you will probably. Well, I mean, be I've said better after. I've said this as well. Like <laughs> I've, I've kind of found even with my own experience yeah. that if I'm not doing that stuff, mm. it's particularly earlier in my life, yeah. I'd be a lot more aggressive. Oh, and yeah. when I go oh, yeah. through oh, that oh, stuff, oh, when I deal with normal stuff, I'm a lot calmer. But, but, but a question to you. Hmm. Wouldn't you say that Xing Chen <laughs> has made you more aggressive? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I felt that in the first few years. Me too. Yeah, yeah. But now, after now after I, some time now. Now I'm completely chill. Yeah, but completely back then, chill. yes, yes. In the beginning, I did short, feel short, that. Short, short, yeah, short. Yes, yes. I did definitely feel that. And I was kind of worrying at that time if it's the right decision. Uh, because it, def- it definitely did become more more aggressive, for sure. Uh, more short, short-tempered. Yeah, and more direct. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. yes, yes. But I think that's just a stage, right? I, hope I, so. I, I finished that. Okay, okay. I'm good. Do, you, do you want uh, more? My shrivel, I mean, he's uh, very uh, Taoist ish. Yeah. Um, he looks the part, but uh, not with Taoist robe, and that's. The he doesn't shit. have a top knot? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he shaved, he shaved head. Okay. So and no, I'm also shaved head for the people who can see me. And, yeah. Uh, my my bathing bathing instructor did they call me the uh, Yang Huashan. Okay. <laughs> the, the the foreign uh, monk. Yeah, right. <laughs> because you've shaved your head, you yeah. just need some dots on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I just need. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So what are your goals with your training? Uh, good question. <laughs> What's your goals? I'm still trying to figure it out. Right now, what I've decided and what I've understood at this point mm-hmm. right now is that whatever I do in my life, mm-hmm. training will be there. The practice. It's a practice. Exactly. And that's just something not only I have to expect, uh, accept, but everybody around me has to accept too. Mm. So that's just the way it is. Mm. So... What comes of that is a different story. I'm, mm. I'm not so interested in that at this point. At yeah. this point, I just know that the training will always be there. I mean, for me, uh, right now is... Uh, because right now, uh, I live in Sweden. My shrivo lives in Italian, right? Mm-hmm. So when I go there, I have these expectations and I have my lists and shit. Some stuff, stuff holes that you I, want to fill up. That or? I want to do and yeah. uh, so on. And then I go there and it's like, okay, that's not what, what we're going to do. That's not important. I want to ask you uh, something. Do you th- do, uh, does your teacher have any other foreign students? No. Okay. I've kind of noticed this about foreigners that come to train with with my teachers, or you know, that come inter intermittently. They don't live or constantly train with him. Yeah. They all come with a list. Hmm. We're a list. Uh, I don't know, European or Americans. 
Well, they're like, I, I, I want to learn this and this and. No, this I, and I would never dare to say that to. You my see, the, I would you, never you, dare to say that to my teacher. So you're you, because you've I would lived I here. never dare to say that to my teacher. And because you've lived here, you understand that. Oh, oh that's uh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you get, you get what you get. Yeah. But you can be a bit smart about it, and you can ask smart questions. The right questions. Yeah. What about? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because we're not living in the 19th century. Yeah, we're, we're not, we're not uh, protecting a uh, caravan. Uh, caravan or, I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. 20, 21st century. Yeah, yeah. If, if this stuff is gonna survive, we need to be able to ask questions. Right, right. And my sure was quite open about it, but he's like, well, some stuff that I ask him sometimes, he's like, well, you don't understand it, because oh, you don't yeah. have the basics. Oh really? Yeah. Okay, good. Especially some of the Nago and stuff, and I'm like, okay, screw the Nago and stuff then. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, it, it teaches me a little bit of Nago and stuff, I'm like, okay. Uh, okay. Now I understand why you and said that. I understand that. why you said that, because if we would have would have done that one before, then I wouldn't have done, yeah. 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 So it's it's like it's like a kind of a cliche to say, but like uh, basic school, mid school, university kind of thingy. Especially with Nego stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so when you come, mm. pandemic aside. Yeah. Okay. So leave that period yeah, yeah, yeah. of time out of it. But if you were coming regularly, mm. you don't come here with an expectation. I'm going to do this, this, this. No, no, no. You've no. just come with an acceptance that you've come to I train. I mean, what I wanted to do that I already want knew that I wanted is that I wanted to get my shit corrected. Mm-hmm. Four years, yes. For this time, yeah. Yeah, four years, uh, Corona time, right? Has uh, done. Um, has not been good for my signature. <laughs> I don't think it's been good for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyways, yeah. So usually, usually when I go to my shuffle like this when I live abroad, is that it takes maybe one, one and a half weeks to correct all this stuff. Right. And then after that, we can start to add, improve, mm -hmm. not add stuff, but improve stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So at this time it's like, yeah, we need to change your gear, change your power. Okay. So that's what we'll be doing. That's what you were doing this time, huh? Yeah. And what did he mean by change your gear? Um, to, uh, too much, uh, Ming gear. Okay. So obvious force, obvious, obvious force, power. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're gonna have people who says like in Shanxi we don't divide Ming Jir and Nan Jir and Hua Jir. I agree. I agree in this one. I think this one is an influence from uh, Hebei. Uh, Beijing or Hebei. Yeah. Particularly Guo Yunshan. But my my, my shifu, he, he speaks of it like that and it's like Ming Jir faces. Okay, it's done now. Now we need to uh, change it to An Jir. So I've been doing like An Jir training. Okay, so for and the then uh, then I started to press him about it. It's like, what do you mean? Do you really think that there's a divide? And he's like, no, not really. If if all the requirements in Singchen are like okay, you'll get it. You have the answer. Yeah. Okay. So, but you have not because you've been away off and doing all this crazy muscle stuff, and you're super. Uh, uh, they say hard. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's let's for the listeners. Yeah. The three stages that we've just spoken about: Min, Ming, An, Hua. Ming being obvious power. An being hidden, hidden or concealed, yeah, yeah. and Hua being transformed. Mm. And you've just gone through this now with your teacher. So, yeah, 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 I've been doing all uh, <clears throat> all anti anti power training. Is there something different that he does? That uh, uh, yeah, it's completely different. From uh, do you want? It, it's not completely different. I mean, you don't have to talk about it. Yeah, if you don't some want of this stuff is it's it's me trying. Yeah, we same with us. Door, doors, same with but, us. Uh, um, I would say that we have a couple of gong for us to change it. Okay. Uh, going for uh, practice, I don't know how you translate it. Yeah, for, uh, skill building. Skill building uh, practices, and then uh, you start doing the wishing trend again. Again. <laughs> yeah. But you're going to like it much more after. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. But let me ask you, yeah. without going into too much detail yeah. that you don't want to give, if you had to give a general 
overview of what the difference is between Ming and An. <clears throat> what would you say it is? Generally, you don't have to go into detail. For us, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, being dependent on Huali. Okay. okay um, closing. For closing yeah. power as the main driver of uh, force. Uh, so your elbows can't stick out. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> I mean, they can stick out if you're doing a horizontal movement. Uh, yeah, or a lifting movement. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's fine. But that one is gonna be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other hand is still there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, is this is a kind of internet joke? Yes, it is. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Me not being on the internet, I'll, I don't understand this. I'll, I'll explain so. to you afterwards. Yeah. Will I get into trouble? Now? No, oh, not okay. at all. Um, I would say that under stuff is more. Uh, um, you still have all the Mingdian stuff in you. Uh huh. But you're much faster, and you pull it out when you need it. Okay. That's how I understand it right now. Is it a refinement yes, of? Yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Hundred percent. So, the idea that it's three different things would be a misunderstanding. It's the same thing. It's the same thing, right? It's just, it's a, just refinement. a refinement. But I mean, there's. Uh, I mean, I met a lot of uh, singy guys. In Beijing, yeah, who like yeah, we don't do the Mingdian stuff. We only do this. Uh, yeah, and it's like, ridiculous. We do this like Taiji, like, and we we and me and my will look at that and like, good luck. <laughs> good luck, exactly. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 you need to develop the power. You need to develop muscles uh, for all the Nadia guys out there in the in the West. I mean, must you need the muscles. Yeah, exactly. Muscle, I mean, that's the way we move. You can't move your body without no, muscle. No, no, no. Yeah, and right. then, yes, of course, we need to develop the gin and everything. Uh, right. Um, but it's kind of funny. I have a Shi uh, Xiong, Gong Fu brother, older yeah. brother, yeah. Yeah. And he, he's pretty, he's, he only, he's only into fighting. He doesn't do any form at all. Okay. At all. Yeah. He, he has the Xing Yi engine in him. Yeah. And then he started to study uh, Baji Chuan All right. in Shanxi. Uh -huh. Some old guy from Huabei who probably came with his uh, kids to Shanxi. And the only thing they do is like uh, uh, hit each other. All okay, day. conditioning. Yeah. Their Baji Chuan is only conditioning. Really? And fighting. No forms at all. No forms at all. Hmm. And he's like, uh, he looked at my, let me see your form. Uh, yeah, you, you you have it, you have it, you have it. I don't really have it. Oh, uh, that. Yeah, it's like it's like your your chin and your arm is sleeping. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is like. <laughs> yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More, 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 much yeah. more, much more. Yeah. And this you got from. Conditioning. Yeah, conditioning. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I do the conditioning. And they so. like don't don't don't, and, and they have a very very sophisticated way of conditioning. From uh, the start with the arms, and then I think it's the shoulder, shoulder, and the back, the yeah. back, the back, the back. Yeah. And then it's the legs, and then it's the uh, ribs, and then it's the arms. Uh, no hands. Hands is the last. Yeah. And it's like striking things, but the best, but the best thing to strike, it's a human. Of course. So that's why they strike each other all the time, <laughs> and they all, always uh, want to make it a thing. That, uh, yeah. So I've been this time. I've been uh, doing more of that. I've been striking a lot. But I remember it. ten years ago when you were here, we had this discussion a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I, 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 I'm okay with that. Well, back when we were training in the golf place in uh, my hometown, we did a lot yeah. of conditioning, hitting our legs and stuff. We didn't have any good of the, what do you call it, yao chiu uh -huh. at all. You know, the truth is that if you don't have it, it's still okay. Of course it's okay. It's still okay. The body is going to heal. If itself. you don't have the liniment and the, the, the yeah. dia da or whatever, that's okay. But let, let me feel your this one. Test it. Yeah. So this time my shrivel told me how we were talking about the lower leg. Yeah. My shrivel told me how to have to take this leg down a little bit <laughs> so this this covers <laughs> yeah, cover. <laughs> okay so the bagua does this yeah now i found that some of my bagua brothers uh <laughs> cheers. doing this stuff cheers they have 
this wraps all the way over uh, here. Yeah, my chauffeur is insane. It wraps yeah, all the yeah. way around. And it takes all some time to develop. But I mean, I have half of it, but I don't have like some of my ship war. Mm. This whole thing is covered. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, you, you can see some of these here. I mean, this is sticking out here, but like these, I'm sure you've seen these yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's look. Did you buy this stuff or did you make this? I bought that, yeah. And that's good for everywhere, right? So when I'm sitting here and you're in my uh, man cave right now, yeah, beating myself. I'm, I'm beating myself with this thing because there's always an opportunity, right? So why waste the opportunity? That's yeah, why it's course, under. That's, that's, why, that's why it's, why it's fine, under it's the fine, chair. It's fine. So yeah. That's fine. But Mashrus Young is a super elaborate ways of doing the stuff. Yeah. And his uh, his uh, sh also show for I think he cut all for the body of Young guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he died in '96. Oh, it was a so while what? ago. No, no, at night. Well, oh, at, at 96. 96. At 96. Oh, not in 96. Yeah, okay. so that also is like, okay, it was bad for his health or blah, 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 blah. It was 96 is old. <laughs> it's pretty old. Yeah. Phew. But uh, some of the people who used to practice there, when they don't go there and hit themselves or hit each other, they like, everything like crashes down. Well, I know people yeah, that play the like, piano and don't do kung fu and they live to 102. It doesn't no, mean no, that no, I'm going to no, stop my, doing... My point, my point is some of the people who went to practice with this old guy now uh, when they don't hit each other or hit some uh, some rocky thing yeah or kick a rock that's how they practice their feet feet yeah uh, kick a rock uh they they feel like their body is like uh, super painful they need to kick something in order to ah. uh, probably kick the <laughs> kick the body on the but um, I kind of feel that too. If I have a few days that I'm too busy and I haven't done my usual gung fa, I feel like my injuries start to hurt. But you mean this type of gung fa or uh, Everything. regular gung fa? Everything. Yeah, same here, same here. Everything. Like, like uh, I'd say the last four days, I had some, some, some pressing matters and I wasn't able to do my usual sure. conditioning. Sure. And my, my injuries started hurting, so... But I think this comes back to that, what yeah. we were talking about earlier, like if you're not a teacher, whatever your goal is with your training, it's going to be part of your life, mm -hmm. right? And I hope so. And I found that the older I get, if I don't train, uh, the problems come back. Mm -hmm. So that's probably, I don't know. I don't know if that's a, I don't know if that's a, a good thing or a bad thing, but it just is what it is. And it's. I'm going to have to continue. And I think you should be happy that you can at least uh, swing a spear or do some uh, bushing to yeah. compared to the guys in Taiyuan who need to hit a wall and kick a <laughs> kick a stone <laughs> in order to feel feel okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, maybe that is a little <laughs> bit better, right? <laughs> It's super fun, Shingo, my, my, my older brother. It's uh, super fun. <laughs> Imagine being lo in lockdown nah, in your apartment. I mean, I mean, when someone comes to challenge us, it's like he, he's, he's coming out. Okay. He's gonna, he, you see the bodybuilder. No, but his kung fu is tatrola. Uh, he's. he's, he's he, he, um, it's developed. Out. He, he, it's developed through fighting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In Shanxi, they usually talk about two different ways of getting Kung Fu. Mm, skill. Yen Chulai, Da Chulai. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's true, though. Yeah. And sometimes it's both. Sometimes it's both. Yeah, sometimes it's both. I prefer the Yen Chulai uh, because yeah. I'm a peaceful, peaceful person. And you're a pacifist. No, um, well, as we get older. Yes. <laughs> okay, so. Now you're going back home tomorrow. Yeah. And what happens then? Uh, start working. Okay. Training wise? Uh, getting the big spare out. Doing some good uh, spare work. Okay. Picked up some good spare work in uh, Shanxi mm -hmm. that will develop. Um, then we have our usual crowd in uh, in uh, pa with Pan Felt. You guys get together regularly? Yeah, 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 yeah. How far uh, are you from each other? Two kilometers. That's very far. Yeah, back, back you right. Could, you could throw a stone <laughs> yeah. to him if you really, if you really put yeah, some yeah, effort yeah. in. We live in the same uh, neighborhood in Stockholm. Okay, yeah, good, yeah. good, good. And I've been thinking. I mean, my brother, uh, my little brother, 
He's eight years younger than me. Mm-hmm. He's he's a really good uh, judo guy. Okay, he kept with, up with the judo. Yeah, until they changed the rules uh, that you can't grab grab the legs. the legs. Yeah, so he said, "Screw this stuff." The, that w- that was my uh, that was his, uh, his favorite limit. Mo- yeah favorite moves. But is it? It's so funny to watch. I mean, I watched because I did judo too, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I do grappling, I yeah, do jujitsu yeah, yeah. too. So for me, it was very interesting to watch. Yeah. Why the hell did they choose that? Because change? of the Russians, I've heard. No, it's not because of the Russians. I've heard. My brother told me that it was because of the Russians. They Why? Were, some of guys entering judo being too good at throwing people. Why is that a reason to change anything? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so my brother said, "Screw this stuff. I'm going to Brazilian judo." Oh, okay. So now he's uh, purple oh, okay. or brown belt yeah, yeah, ish. Yeah. I'm in brown. Between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one is the best? Brown is before black. I think it's purple or brown. I don't okay. remember. Anyway. Anyways, he's getting too good, so I need to get into some grappling stuff again. I did the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for a while. Okay. Uh, it was fun, but then I moved and then the school it became too much of a hassle to go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But now in, in 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 Stockholm, not far from me, they've opened a big, super big MMA thingy. Okay. Alexander Gustafsson. Uh, oh, okay. And his coaches, they opened a, a new school, not so far from me. So probably I'm gonna go there now. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. So practice with Pat and practice over there. Why not? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Well, that sounds good. Yeah. I mean, you're not teaching, so there's no point in me asking you what your social media things are, if people want to contact you or whatever. No, but if they want to come to Shanxi to work out with the Shufu, then... All right, cool. I so mean, we that's going to be a hassle, though. Maybe, I don't know. No, I mean, if people really want to do something, they must do it, right? Yeah. So, all right. So we'll get some, whichever contact details you yeah. want to put in the public sphere, okay. we'll do that. Um, I've known you... F- the last time I saw you was 10, ten years, years ago, ago yeah. and it feels like <laughs> yesterday. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. So I, I think we're in some senses very similar. We got into Xing Yichuan for ourselves yeah. and we continue for ourselves. So, yes. so that's great. Definitely. Are you Xing, still? Xing Yichuan is a um, yeah. very interesting thing. Yeah, for sure. I must say. Yeah, for sure. And the more you learn, the more you need to learn more (laughs) exactly can you say that yeah yeah yeah, exactly all right well nice Uh, to have you i don't have any more you do you don't you don't have any more all right so let's give you a cup up of some new lunch they should sponsor the podcast but they won't but anyway we'll give them a bit of advertising uh, maybe my shishion can give you some contact to defend you yeah no i mean usually i drink funjo yeah (laughs) <laughs> I don't know how that's going to work out on this podcast, but anyway, cheers. All right, well, thanks for coming through. It's Thank been really you, great. Aaron. Yeah, and we'll, we'll be in touch. <laughs>